Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be the art of making your move and knowing when to make your move. I've got an email here from a viewer, and he says, Hey, Coach, I need your advice. I'm a 34-year-old male, and recently, these past four months, I met this girl. She's a stripper and is the same age as me. She seems to have been talk taking a liking to me, but I'm not sure how to read her. I have dated strippers in the past, and I actually just ended a two-year relationship with one about a month ago. I have spent the night with this new one only one time, and we made out, and things got pretty heated. She said she had, she really liked me, but wanted to give me give it some time. I didn't push anything on her, and we left it at that. Well, one thing that I want to say about the seduction process is like when you're like when you're in bed with a girl like that, and you're fooling around. The idea, and I talk about this a lot in videos, and I'm not going to go into detail of this extensively again, but the process is, is you take two steps forward, and then when you encounter some resistance when she pushes you off or she starts to put some of her clothes back on, then you take one step back, and you just kind of chill out, relax, just kind of caress her hair and talk to her for a couple of minutes, and then two or three minutes later, you take another run at her, start kissing her again, you start making out with her, start letting your hands wander, then you slowly start undoing her bra again, slowly start taking some of her clothes back off again, touching her different, just letting your, your fingers do the walking and letting your hands roam. The idea is that when she throws up resistance, you back off a little bit, chit chat for a couple of minutes, caress each other, hold each other, just chat with one another. After a couple of minutes, just say, bring those beautiful lips back over here again. And then you just start making out with her and fooling around. And the idea is that like each time, you get her a little further along until you get to get her to the point where she gets so turned on she can't take it anymore. And then she throws throws in the towel and gives up all resistance and lets you penetrate her. But if you, but the, the key is, is always making her feel comfortable. Where it's like you have the confidence to make a move, but when she says stop, slow down, whoa, we're moving way too fast, you just back off and you're cool with it for a few minutes. And that communicates to her that you're totally cool. You can take it or leave it. And you just hang out, you relax, and then you take another run at it, two steps forward, one step back, two steps forward, one step back when you get resistance, two steps forward until you run into resistance, and then you back off, take a step back. Do you get what I'm saying here? It's just, you just keep going back and forth, back and forth until ultimately you end up inside of her. And you gotta remember, sex has to be the man's fault. So if you get to the point where both of you are down to your underwear, don't expect her, even if she's taking off most of your clothes, to take off your underwear after you've taken hers off because if she does that and then you penetrate her in a way it's kind of her fault that you guys had sex but if she's naked because you've taken all of her clothes off and she's taken some of your clothes off but you still get your pants on and then you take your pants off and penetrate her then sex is still your fault and so that's something that you got you got to keep in mind is that you're dealing with a psychological barrier in the seduction process to a woman who's worried about what her friends are going to think, what other people are going to think, what you're going to think about her. But when she gets to the point where she's just too turned on, she, just, she throws in a towel and she won't put up any more resistance and she'll let you have your way with her. And so that's one thing that I would say to you about that is that you may have backed off a little too soon in this particular case because at the end of the day 90 percent of the time you're charming james bond 10 percent of the time you're like the naughty boy that kind of takes things a little bit further he's a little dangerous does things a little risque he wants to, it's like he wants to kind of see what he can get away with kind of thing that's the attitude that you want to have but it's always in a fun and playful tone and you never want to force a woman to do something she's not ready to do the idea is to maintain her level of safety and comfort and get closer and closer and clo closer to her until eventually you end up inside of her he says i never text her and she's always the first one to text me she always sends winks every now and then and then i miss you when i'm with her and even when i visit her at work she's always hanging off of me and always lets me know where she's going if she has to leave for a bit to do whatever yet i'm unsure if i should just go for it the next time I'm with her or wait it out. I think I covered that previously. He says, I've been doing what I hear you telling other guys and that is to let them know what you want and if not interested to catch the next bus. What are your thoughts? She seems to be into me, but hard, it's hard to tell. 
She sounds like she's definitely into it. She's calling you. She's reaching out to you. And but the thing is, you got to keep in mind is you're the man. You're the one who has a penis in the relationship. And so the nice guy stuff only goes so far. The the idea is that you, by hanging back, it creates attraction. But if you hang back too long, then it communicates weakness. And so you should always assume that when a woman contacts you, when she reaches out to you, it's because she's thinking about you. She wants to see you. Your job is to, is to facilitate the two of you getting together, either over a drink or her coming over to your place for to make dinner together. Maybe she brings a bottle of wine, that kind of thing. And you just hang out and you create an opportunity for sex to happen. Whether you go out to a bowling alley and you go bowling or you go for drinks or you take her to dinner doesn't matter. You go for a run together or you do a marathon, whatever it happens to be, whatever you're doing, the idea is that in the evening, later on at night, it leads to either you being at her place or her being at your place so it can lead to sex. But you don't want to continually interact with the girl and then when she calls you, since she doesn't ask you out on a date, then you just hang up and let it go at that. Because you're going to remember, women are going to put themselves into your orbit, but they're not going to be the man in the relationship. They still want the guy to be chivalrous. They still want the guy... They'll put themselves in your orbit and they'll make it easy for you to do something about it, but they're not going to do everything for you. And in this particular case, it kind of sounds like you're waiting on this particular girl to invite you to do something. But if she's chasing you and she's calling you, use it as an opportunity to set your next date. And you should always make a move when you're with her. Again, two sets forward, one set back, two sets forward, one set back, two sets forward, one set back, until ultimately you end up inside of her. That's just simply the process of seduction. He says, the funny thing is, now that my ex, who is also a stripper, knows that I'm seeing someone else and there's a possibility that this new one likes me, my ex is texting me, asking me back, and telling me she can't find anyone like me. Help a brother out, please. What should I do? I like both and I'm having a hard time choosing, but I really want to be with this new one. Or should I get a... Dingy seems now I have two boats. I can't sink them both. Oh, oh. Well, you're not in a relationship with either one of the two of these girls. And if your ex-girlfriend wants to get together and hang out, and that's, I mean, I, I can't tell you what to do, dude. You have to make those decisions for yourself. But that's what happened. I talk about this all the time because when you have another girl you start dating, you put yourself in an abundance type of state, an abundance type of mentality. And, and what's nice about it is these same kind of things happen because it makes it very easy for you to do things instinctively that will create even more attraction with the girls that you're dating. And so, like I said, I mean, it's up to you. You're, you're going to have to decide which one. But like I said, this other one, this new girl, where you're going wrong is you're giving up too easily. You're just, when she throws up a little resistance, you're just like quitting altogether instead of just backing off for a couple of minutes, caressing there, laying there with her talking to her, look her in the eyes, tell her how beautiful she looks, whatever it happens to be. And then after a couple of minutes, just say, bring those gorgeous lips over here. I miss them. And you start kissing her again, start making out, and you take another run at her. That's all you, you do in that department. And and the other thing I would say is that when she reaches out to you and she calls you, you're not taking advantage of those to create a date. But it's obvious that this other, this new girl likes you, so arrange an opportunity for sex to happen. That's all you got to do. And when you're with her, Make your move with her and just assume that the reason she's texting you and calling you, don't like not make a move on her because you think it's the right thing to do or you're, or you're somehow being chivalrous, chivalrous or Mr. Nice Guy. At the end of the day, women still want you to be a man about things and handle things in the bedroom and gently lead the relationship to where you want it to go. So if you have a question you want to ask me, go to my website, click the Contact Me tab, which will be in the left-hand side of your screen. Send me one to two paragraphs max, and just give me several days to get back to you with a response. If you want to talk to me right away, the quickest way to get my help is to book a paid phone coaching session. You can do that by going to my website. Click the Products tab, which will be at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. If you want to get a digital version of my Kindle ebook, on my website, underneath the email sign-up box, is a box that has a link that will take you right to the download page. Once you get there, if you don't have a Kindle device already, you can download one of their free e-reader apps for your smartphone, tablet device, or your computer. It only takes a matter of seconds to download and sell the app and complete the purchase of my book. And if you appreciate the value of the information I offer in these video newsletters, the articles on my website, and my ebook, you can show your appreciation by going to my website right now. And on the Wibby toolbar at the bottom of your screen, click the PayPal Donate button and donate any amount that you feel is equal to the value of the information. And I will talk to you soon.